All right, so my coffee uh, stain has dried, so we've given uh, Harley back to its rightful owner. <laughs> We're back with Karen Doc Halligan, Chief Veterinary Officer for the Lucy Pet Foundation, and she's answering some of your pet questions. Um, okay, the first one is from Nadine. She says, how can I help my 11-year-old dog overcome separation anxiety? She cries constantly yeah. when I leave the house. And of course, at 11 years old, yes. uh, can we do that? Well, guess what we have? Xanax. Prozac, Clomacom, we have all, the, all these drugs now that help. First and foremost, get a blood test to make sure she doesn't have some underlying problem. Mm -hmm. And then we'll put them on some medication, that and behavior modification. And let you do it. Don't give them your people oh, no, dose. No, no, if you no, have no, your people no, dose, no, I have some in the medicine cabinet, I'll just throw it her way. No. Yeah. And then also to enrich the environment, puzzle toys. There's a lot of things you can do to entertain them. They have doggy TV mm -hmm. while, while you're gone at work. Yeah, we've seen how that's worked. And the owners will like say, hey, hi there. And so the, the, the dog's not <laughs> quite sure what's going on, but it doesn't feel like it's alone sometimes. Okay. Um, Jocelyn says, my dogs are constantly itching and biting themselves. I checked and they don't have fleas. What could it be? The problem is that the fleas are smart. They don't mm -hmm. stay on the dog. They jump in the dog, they bite it, and then they yeah, jump Get off. full and leave. Yes. Yeah. Blood meal. But there's a protein in the saliva of some fleas that stays in the skin and makes the dogs go nuts. So got to do flea control. We have a lot of medications we can put the dogs on yeah. if they're itching like that. And now. also allergies. A lot of Absolutely. dogs will have allergies, and right? And we have medication for allergies, antihistamines, absolutely. Yeah. So the key is get it into a veterinarian so yeah. they can actually and check and see. Yeah, and do flea and, uh, you know, parasite control all year round now. Yeah. Yes. Especially in Houston because we're warm all the, most Correct. of the time. Okay. Yes. Uh, Chris says, I fed a stray cat in my backyard. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> and then four more cats showed up, of course. <laughs> Free meal at this house okay I don't want them to starve but they're multiplying right. like gremlins like well what should I okay do? did you know cats are induced ovulators like rabbits so when a cat's in heat and the male mates her mm -hmm. she ovulates so what is the chance of her getting pregnant real good very yeah <laughs> It's a good thing that's not like us, yeah. right? We're not like that. But anyhow, so yeah, you're going to have 100 cats, okay? Wow. So what he has to do, trap the cats. You can rank traps. You just put the food in there and take them to the local humane societies, and they'll spay and neuter them. Otherwise... Yeah. yeah, you're gonna get gonna more have cats. A, yeah, have a lot okay. Of, a lot It'll be cats. a cat herder. Okay. Yep. Uh, Cameron says, "Why does my dog go crazy when the water hose is on? She tries to bite the water. It's ridiculous." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you know that's really common. I mean, dogs like that. It's it's a form of play for them. So. Right? See that? Yeah, right. He's saying, let <laughs> the dog over the play with the water. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that behavior at all. Yeah, so yeah. So it's just dog was. And they see it. They see something yes. coming their way. Why not? It's no different than a, a, a ball or whatever. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Charles says, my dog, Sugar, is starting to choke after she eats. She doesn't seem to like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she doesn't seem like she's like in pain, right. but it sounds bad. What do you think is happening? Well, when dogs get older, and I'm getting it too, my esophagus. Yeah. I'm, my swallowing's not the same as I'm getting older. Same thing with the dog. So what you want to do is elevate their food and water so it helps them swallow everything. So that is sometimes a, a, a behavior we'll see in older dogs. Should get it checked out to make sure there isn't an underlying medical problem, like a thyroid problem or something yeah. like that. But elevated feeding will help that. Okay. You have cats. I have a cat. I, yes, I love I cats. Love they, cats. Have, they have yes. all kinds of personalities. Yes, they do. Uh, but Velma, she has uh, a cat that she says is antisocial. Uh-oh. Okay. She hisses and claws at friends and family when <laughs> they visit. Is there a way to make her more friendly? And a lot of times it has to do also with where that cat was before you got them. Or Absolutely. where any pet was before you got yeah, them, right? you know, there was a socialization period in cats and dogs, which is anywhere between 8 and 16 weeks. And most people don't get them during that. So you get them and they're kind of damaged. They have anxiety. Mm -hmm. So with cats like that, you definitely have to be armed with a squirt bottle. Um, if they start to come after you and you have to escort them and teach them because that's how she would interact with another cat mm -hmm. I think getting another cat would solve that problem. Wow. Oh, yeah Because okay. then she would wrestle with the other cat. Either that or you sell tickets to the, to the fight there Because <laughs> <laughs> like, they're both drawing blood. That's but yeah, you're right about that water bottle thing and yes. immediately because they have to associate yes. it with the action Yes, and there's also drugs. Yeah there, <laughs> As a doctor, <laughs> once again. Okay, uh, Rudy says when my dog snickerdoodle goes outside she always eats our flowers 
cars and our plants. Is this dangerous? How can we get her to stop? Well, it depends on which ones she's eating, right. right? There are five toxic plants that will kill a dog or cat. So you should discourage that. And what you would do is every time you take her outside on the leash, when she goes to eat that plant, throw a treat, divert her. And so then she gets out of the habit. It's a habit when she goes out and eats the plant. Yeah. Should not eat plants or flowers. At the very least, they'll get vomiting, diarrhea. And you yeah, because sometimes that. they do that to ingest it. Don't, they have an well, upset stomach really or something. They grass when their tummy's upset. Yeah. Absolutely. And also, the diet might not be a good diet. No table scraps. Everyone gives their dogs chicken. I'm not, they're feeding the kibble and I'm adding some chicken. And sometimes she gets steak and I'm like, why? Yeah. And, and, and oftentimes if it. you give them too much meat, you see it on the other end. Oh, it doesn't, yeah, yeah, it's not pretty. Pancreatitis, they can die from a life. Well, that's interesting because we see all the commercials with like, in the wild, the yes. dog eats all this meat. And you know what, Deborah? They're omnivores. Okay, they are like us. They don't need those high protein diets or killing dogs. We're seeing all these dogs come in on high protein diets and they're going into kidney failure. What's protein? Amino acids that yeah. get broken down into nitrogen that their kidneys have to filter out. And it's shortening the dog's lifespan. So stay away from that. Just like with humans, you can't do two Absolutely. all meat. Okay. Yes. Uh, Linda says, is it safe to use spray air fresheners around my cockatiel? I don't see a warning on the can. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, do not spray around cockatiels. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to be safe. <laughs> okay. Do not spray that around cockatiels. It is not safe. Any deodorizer. Little tiny lungs cockatiel just drop yeah. over like that. No, and they're not going to put a warning. They don't put warning on ethylene glycol <laughs> or chocolate. Yeah. Could kill your dog or cat. Yeah, keep away. Yeah. yeah, so no, don't use those around. You can even, if you have heat from cooking a pan um, and you get fumes, that will kill a bird. Wow. They're very, very sensitive. sensitive. Okay, and, and again, the point is they're so small. Tiny things look. impact them in a different way exactly. that they would uh, bigger animals or us. Okay, Carrie says, I really like my new boyfriend. My dog Joffrey does not. I'm actually afraid Joffrey he's going to <laughs> bite him. What's a good technique to get him to calm down? And I guess a lot of it too is about the introduction and yes. making them, because it, it's, it, sometimes dogs will get jealous. Absolutely, Jeffrey's probably a boy. Yeah. Let's hope he's neutered, okay? But no, there's that competition for mom's attention. So what she has to do is not feed the dog. Joffrey comes over, throws a tree. Um, Joffrey feeds the dog. Joffrey plays with the dog. Had the boyfriend do it, yeah. Yeah, or I'm sorry. Had the boyfriend do well, all the nice things. Yes, yeah. so, so Joffrey then, when the boyfriend comes over, he doesn't feel threatened. He's happy that the boyfriend's over instead of feeling left out. Yeah, in fact, it's, if you do too much of that, though, Joffrey might not like you anymore. And just, <laughs> when, when, like when, when, when is your boyfriend coming over again? <laughs> when, is your boyfriend coming it's anytime soon? Right. Yeah, it can, it, I, it's happened a number of times. Yes. Okay. Um, Mike, Will says my cat Buster is lazy. <laughs> a lot of cats are. And uh, put on a few extra pounds in her older age. Should I change her diet? Look uh, at, so. Oh, okay, that cat's Buster. like morbidly obese. Buster's busting a gut right there. No, that's Look. terrible. <laughs> that's, that a coyote just grabbed that thing. You will never see a a fat cat in the wild, Deborah. <laughs> what? They're always on the run. But right? what motivates them to eat? What makes an animal in the wild want to eat? Uh, hunger? Yes, thank you <laughs> yes. for answering yes. that. Because people think it's something different than that. Yeah. You know, no, they they need to get hungry. Most pets aren't getting hungry because we're using food to love them. I feel bad, I was at work all day. Uh. Here, 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 here. And the kibble is much more fattening than the canned food. So she's got to put that cat on canned food, and cut back on the dry food. And the other thing a lot of people do is they'll have like those little uh, pet feeders that they spill yeah, up the pet thing it. and they leave it there Who so they has eat all food day. all day access to that. Like if buffet. I have chips there, I'm going to eat it all day. Yeah. So it's very abnormal. It's tough love, controlled feeding. Let your pets get hungry before they eat. All right, Doc, thank you very much for the <laughs> great advice for our furry friends. To contact Doc Halligan or to learn more about the Lucy Pet Foundation, just visit greatdayhouston.com. Well, coming up, thinking about adopting a pet but still have some questions about the process we'll have the SPCA with us with more on what to know before you bring a new animal into your home but coming up next as we go to break dog trainer Sarah McBride is here with some advice on approaching a dog you haven't met before so the best way to meet a dog that you don't know especially if there's an owner there ask the owner first they'll be able to let you know if there's anything you need to watch out for and some people just don't want you to say hi to their dog uh, and then the best way to also introduce yourself to a dog that you don't know without the owner it's best to let them come to you. You can try getting low, you can try talking sweet, and you can give them a little bit of food to encourage them your way.